Some folks will like you and some that just won't. Some that stay real and some that just don't. Trying to fit in will only take you so far. You'll never find home trying to change who you are. So don't spend your whole life trying to be what you ain't. Can't hide your heart with a new coat of paint. You think they'll accept you? I promise they can't. Just be who you are. Forget what they think. So just be who you are and forget what they think. Welcome to Vet with a Mic, content driven by veterans' issues. So today we are talking to somebody who is not technically a veteran. He is still on active duty. My buddy Raiden, who is a United States Naval sailor, a corpsman by trade. How are you doing today, buddy? What's going on, Ryan? Appreciate you for having me on the show. Of course, man. Like I said, whenever I stumbled upon your content, I was like, man, I got to talk to this guy. He's doing some really (laughs) cool stuff. And I didn't at that time, I didn't know you were a sailor. Well, what's even funnier, because this is a crossover episode, you interviewed yeah. me just right prior to this, we discovered we were actually in Siganella, Sicily at the same time together. That's right, man. <laughs> I just didn't even know. <laughs> no, no. And of course, you were working in the hospital and I was in security, so like, <laughs> we didn't have too many times uh, to, to cross paths, right, so to right. speak, unless uh, we were taking somebody to the hospital in which that was going to be a, a bad day. But I don't even know if you worked in the ER at all. But no, I was uh, I was in the clinic. Right, that's right. We covered that. Yeah, yeah. over there on the other side of the base, where it's right. uh, where the uh, the amenities are not quite as nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So let's talk a little bit about your well, much more recent past than mine. What's your life in the uniform been like this far? Yeah. Uh, so, like you mentioned, uh, Navy corpsman. Uh, Navy chief, been in for over 18 years now. Um, you know, it's been serving pretty much all over, uh, being first stationed out on the West Coast uh, with the with the Marines, uh, made numerous deployments to Iraq, uh, three times to Iraq, and once to Afghanistan. Um, one ship deployment on the USS Iwo Jima. And then, you know, in between those times, uh, it's, you know, being stationed at, uh, at the hospitals. But even when I was in the hospitals, um, you know, every time I would go to hospital, I'd get pulled out for deployment and uh, right. <laughs> get sent back to the sandbox. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's my, my time in the military has made me who I am today. Mm. Um, you know, obviously a lot of experiences. You know, with with you know 18 plus years um but just grateful and thankful uh, that i'm still here and you know if you would ask you know hn or uh seaman dionisio right like uh <laughs> if i'd still be in in the service uh you'd, you'd probably laugh at you because uh <laughs> i didn't see myself uh you know still being in after all this time um, but yeah, you know, here I am, uh, just continue to learn and trying to become a better leader for my sailors. So let's unpack a little bit the nomenclature for those of us. I mean, who are not sailors, obviously I tracked all of that, but you know, all the army guys are scratching their head right now. going, <laughs> What the hell is this guy talking about? So you are an FMF corpsman, which that is a really cool tasking that Navy corpsmen actually do. They implant with the Marines. So you are the medic for the Marines, right? generally speaking, right? So you get to pretty much have the Marine Corps experience. You're the probably the only sailor in which Marines really, really respect, right? <laughs> and so the rest of us kind of just always get ribbed, but nobody talks shit about Doc ever, right? And so then you also spent some time actually doing regular Navy stuff. Like you were on a vessel, I assume as an independent duty corpsman. So you were probably 
acting as the ship's um, medical personnel. And well, then, yeah, actually, yeah. I was in a big, I uh, was in an LHD. Um, so there was other corpsmen with me. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So was it a Mew? Was that, was um, that a part of the Mew? So we did have Marines. Who oh, you were couldn't get on, away with it. You couldn't yeah, get away. Yeah, I couldn't me. get away. <laughs> they were on a, a Mew, which is a Marine Expeditionary Unit, yeah. but I was, I was a ship's crew. Okay. Uh, so I was stationed on the ship for uh, three years. Yeah. I have like the Marines always, I hear mixed messages when it comes to the Mew. Some of them love it. Some of it hate it. I, you know, I mean, I was a mobile guy, so we did a little bit of that too. So like, yeah. I go, Hey, I liked it, but you know, I guess we were on civilian ships, probably a little bit of a different lifestyle probably. But so, yeah, let's talk about these deployments that you had. You were implanted with the Marines then, correct? While you yeah. Were- so, um, after core school, which is, you know, our, our uh, you know, where we learn how to be a corpsman, basically, um, I went to what's called Field Medical Service School, which is now, it's a different name, but same concept, Field Medical mm-hmm. Training Battalion. It's where corpsmen go, just like what you said earlier, basically how to train with and be with, uh, with the Marines. Yeah. Uh, and I went there in, in the West Coast in Camp Pendleton. And then after that, my first duty station, I was stationed with the 1st Marine Division in 29 Palms. Mm. I was with um, Infantry Battalion. Um, my first three years made two combat deployments to Iraq, um, both around six, seven months, and pretty much in the same area in Iraq. And, uh, you know, after my time with the Marines, I uh, went to Balboa, which uh, Naval Medical Center, San Diego. Mm. Uh, you know, went there. I was there for about six or seven months until I got another call. Basically, you know, they needed because uh, during this time, right? Just to give a background, this was '04 to '07 was my first duty station with the Marines, mm. and you know, deployments was kind of like constant then. Yeah. Um, yeah, the op tempo was really high. Though. Yeah, yeah, the op tempo. Because that was, was that high. was that was for those of us who don't know necessarily, that was whenever the Iraqi campaign was really starting to heat up. Right, yeah. right. So uh, you know, made like I said, made two deployments with the Marines, went to a hospital, uh, was given orders basically to go back with the Marines, but this time with the Marine Air Wing, uh, deploy with them for six months back to mm-hmm. Iraq. So that was about three deployments to Iraq within four or five years of my first, um, my first enlistment. Yeah. Um, so uh, to just kind of reiterate this, the reason why Marines respect the corpsmen so much is you guys do the same stuff that the Marines do. You go through the intensive weapons training, just like they do. And then of course you go through, which I don't know if you mentioned this specifically because I don't know what the, the correct verbiage is for it, but your FMF school is pretty intensive. It is like combat lifesaver on steroids, so to speak. It is really intensive because you're having to deal with like combat casualty training. So right. you have to learn how to work under pressure. Um, and I, I, you know, I just had, I had a buddy who is, he was a, an FMF corpsman as well. And he was telling me about the, 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 I think there's a pig that you guys use during training. Yeah. Right? Cadavers. They, yeah. they did do that. Um, they've done that in the past, but I don't believe they're doing that now. Not anymore. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. just all simulated now. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I assume that the, the replicas that they're using as far as that, they're probably pretty anatomically correct. So they probably do the, the arterial spurts and whatnot so that you guys yeah. can practice on that. We have so yeah. Mannequins. So. Yeah. 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 But I mean, they actually have like blood bags inside of them. Right. So or yes, at least yeah. corn syrup or something, something that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. will move like blood. Yeah. So I just wanted to yeah, kind of lay that foundation down of just why the Marines love you guys so much is because you are the type of sailor that actually you endure all of that with them. You eat what they eat. You sleep where they sleep. You, you fight with them. You are for all intents and purposes, a Marine. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, uh, Marines love, um, a corpsman who, you know, like you said, a, a lot of the things that, 
uh, they do, we we still have to do, right? Like, yeah. um, as far as like physical standards, um, but that's on top of, you know, obviously keeping up with um, the latest updates as far as tactical medicine, emergency mm-hmm. medicine that we have to uh, continue to know. And, um, you know, I kind of want to, I want to give a shout out to the, the corpsman of today because I feel like, you know, the training that we received then um, pales in me being a senior enlisted now. Yeah. Just looking back, right? Like the, the training that we received with, back then pales in comparison to what, um, what, what the they're corpsmen, getting now. What the corpsmen of today are getting now. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot, a lot of our corpsmen now and, and just sailors in general, right? They, um, they know. Uh, they're, they're very smart and they, they can pick things up very quickly and um, yeah just some of the advanced training that we get now and and obviously some of the the um, the training that we're trying to push out in my command right now is um, just trying to help them not just with you know the current situation but you know future conflicts as well yeah yeah well you know, I assume that working on the pig cadaver was pretty cutting edge at the time. At right? the time, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So that that's what I'm saying. Just the, as more information comes out, you know, our training standards get get you know higher yeah, and higher. Yeah. So yeah, I for sure kudos, and I hope that those guys are are doing great things to protect the rest of us in the uniform because Lord knows we need it, right? So that. let's let's talk a little bit about what's so what's your plans? I noticed you said that you. I've got like 18 and a half years, right? So yeah, plus 18 and a half. And while while we were not recording, we talked a little bit about you got one last duty station in. And so what's what's life after that gonna look like? I mean, because being a chief is a big deal within the Navy. And you're about to be like the rest of us, just another asshole walking around Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh you know, when I first started like this brand and this business, uh, you know, then the podcast that I had you on, right. Mm. Um, you know, before that, like, you know, I, I started thinking early, like, what am I going to do after the uniform, after my service? Um, because, you know, a lot of, uh, service members, um, when they start thinking about that for the most, for the most part, it's towards the end of their career or it's like after they get out. That was me. I said, I'll figure it out later. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I had a loose plan. I like, like, oh, I'll go into like law enforcement after <laughs> after the uniform. But yeah, I was just so, like I said on your show, I was just so ready to get out. I was like, man, just let me out. I'll figure it out later. I'm glad yeah. you're being a bit more proactive than I am or than I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it was just more of me learning some lessons from, uh, you know, some of my friends and who got out and were, you know, maybe not to their fault, but at times were ill prepared of, of what they were going to do after the service. So, you know, obviously that got me thinking. I was like, well, what am I going to do? Um, obviously, yeah. um, I I've always just being in the military. Uh, just you know the experiences that I've had, I, I still wanted to keep that connection. I still wanted to be part of the community and just, you know find a way to kind of get back mm. uh, of my own to the community. So you know, started this brand Florida Set Fidelis. Um, you know, and that, that kind of just initially started it, and then obviously with the podcast, you know, interviewing veterans like yourself. Um, I think the main thing, and you know, we talked about this in, in my show, was just to uh, highlight the positive things that the veterans, the veteran community, are doing out there now, instead of mm. just the negative things that you constantly hear on the news every day. Yeah, yeah, because that there's plenty of that. There's plenty of right. noise out there. Yeah. And now you have a really unique way of of spinning it. Like I, and I don't, I don't, I, th- I don't think I really caught it until after you said it, you call it second service. Right. Yeah. So could you un- unpack that for me? What, how, how did you start to conceive it as, or conceptualize it as second service? 
Yeah, I mean, um, you know, when when we get out or you know, when when you guys get out, right? Like, what are some of the things that um, you know you guys miss most about the service? Um, you know, it's the camaraderie, the brotherhood, right? And and the main thing I think is just finding some purpose, uh, yeah. finding that next mission, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, when I started thinking about this, well, it was like, you know, you're just trying to find another way to serve the community, to serve people. So that's where the idea of you know second service kind of came about, and how you know I talk about that in my in my podcast. Um, you know, how do, how do we serve and kind of give back um, even without the uniform? Yeah. Yeah, you're right, because I think a lot of us come out, and I hear that a lot, like, well, there's just no community. Right. That's that's the way they conceptualize it. Um, and we talked a little bit about your, on your show, about just how polarizing uniform experience actually can be. And then when you leave the uniform, you just have nothing in common with a lot of the previous relationships you had with people. And I will tell you as somebody that if, if I was telling someone who was still in the uniform about to get out, that would be the thing that I would probably harp on the most is, hey, understand that you have to use the right social script for the right setting now. Mm. You're out of the military. And if you use a lot of the military scripts in the civilian world, you're going to get yourself frustrated. Because they don't use the same script. They don't have the same hierarchy that we do. And so I just use, and one of the the episodes we talked about in anger issues is whenever you have a meeting with somebody in the military culture, if you're late, like that's, that's a slight. You're saying to the person that you don't respect them or I'm a higher rank than you. So, you, you know, deal with it, pal. Right. 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 But in the unit, but in the civilian world, it's not accepted. really. Yeah. yeah, it's not really the same standard. And so I remember I caught myself after my time in the uniform. I began upset about applying the wrong social script to the wrong setting. Right? Is I'm using my military script, thinking that this person needs to know that if you're not on time, you're late. You know, and if you're not early, you're you're late. Pretty you're much, late. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so I was using that same script and I was getting myself all worked up about things. And then people are looking at me like, I'm a madman. Like, why, why are you upset? Well, cause it's disrespectful for you not to be here. You know, you should be here at least five minutes prior. And they're like, I was in traffic, relax. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just like, like I said, and I'm being a little hyperbolic a little bit, but not, not by much. There were just, there were times which, everybody has these like normal everyday rub up against with the civilian culture. And we're trying to apply our military culture to it. Like I remember whenever I was at the university, just walking across the university and I'd see somebody walking in the grass, it would still bug me a little. (laughs) That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Right. And so you just don't think about it. And like I said, that's a silly thing to really, but, but just you double take it. Right. Yeah. (laughs) But, but, yeah, but uh, some of those qualities that we develop, right? Like over over time, those are some of our kind of like our strongest traits when we go leave yeah. the military and go into the civilian world, right? Yeah. And it's the, those are some of the reasons why civilians love hiring veterans uh, because they have that those traits. Yeah. If though, if they're mellow about it, right? Is right. They, yeah. If they yeah. can be like. I demand that of myself, but right. I can't demand that of everybody else that because it's a different cult. The, the boss may be like, Oh, I always like that. Raiden's here early. <laughs> like, but if you're like pissed at your boss, like, Hey, we were supposed to have a meeting at 10, 10 AM and you're, you're not here. Um, that obviously can, can cause friction in your life. Uh, I, yeah, I, so I, I, I really do think that, you're right. There are lots of things that we take into our next life, so to speak, that are a lot of pluses. They really are. There's a lot of things that 
that make us great candidates in life after the uniform. The problem is, is that we often still apply our military culture to settings that it's not appropriate and we can get ourselves in trouble and get ourselves upset about things. And then we look unreasonable because yeah, we're can, using the, yeah, the wrong script. You can't be like knife handing people. Left yeah. Right. right yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. So um, let's, so let's talk a little bit more about your podcast. So how long have you been doing this now? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, the podcast. So just a little background. So, if you listen to a podcast, the first, I would say the first 23 episodes are vastly different from, uh, you know, the, the ones after that, because there are mainly just uh, Facebook group interviews. So people mm -hmm. that I had in my Facebook group, I, you know, the veterans that I interviewed, um, and this was back in 2018, but I didn't start the podcast until maybe a year and a half later, until mm -hmm. late 2019. So it's been about 2019 since I've started, um, you know, consistently putting out uh, episodes. So right now we're about close to 90 episodes. 90 now. episodes. Yeah, wow. yeah. So wow, it's, like, it's been uh, yeah. It's I think been we're at 30. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do two episodes a week. How what how frequently do you post? Yeah, we've been just doing uh, weekly. Oh, okay, once a week. So you'll probably right. you'll just you'll catch up to me. Yeah, probably. Man, I feel like I I feel like I'm always recording. That's what I feel like. Now. I feel like I'm married right in front of this in this right in front of this sign right. all the time. I, I feel like I actually am welded into this chair at times. Yeah. No, I so what is the ultimate goal then for the podcast? Because you know, we talked a little bit about um what the ultimate goal is for Vet with a mic and how this is supposed to be the flagship for a much larger vision. Uh, within the nonprofit space. So what do you want to do, especially since you're you're moving towards your own transition story? What is, what's the ultimate goal for your podcast? I mean, you know, initially, and I think this is still the goal. I mean, it's just mainly uh, highlighting the veterans that we have on mm -hmm. every week and kind of just sharing their stories and, you know, obviously talking about their second service. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously for me, like it's, it ties into uh, the Florida State Fidelis. The main, my main goal is, is what, with what we're doing with that is getting, getting the memorial coins because we provide these memorial yeah. coins to uh, families of the fallen and I think the podcast is just another avenue of us just promoting that and getting yeah. with companies and organizations that can assist us with, with that, with that mission. So I had forgotten that during my pre-production uh, information gathering about you. And I wanted to ask you about this because that's very similar to something like a uh, Televahala project does, right? Are you familiar with that organization? Yeah, I've heard. Yeah. 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 They actually, um, I had nominated MA2 Shea Breyer um, for a a plaque for his family because he tragically was killed um, in a, I guess you'd say, by a, a an estranged uh, partner back in early 2020. And I just thought, man, we got to do something to, because he had a small child, we got to do something to let that baby girl know that you know, her, her dad was loved by the uniform too. So I reached out to them. Now, are those the type of stories that you're, that you're focusing in on with your, with your project? Like yeah. this, the, 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 when you say, cause I think tell Valhalla, they mainly focus on, I think suicide and fatalities of different types other than just killed in service. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, uh, I haven't really been in contact with, to Valhalla, wow. but from what I've seen is a lot of focus goes into uh, the suicide awareness. Yeah. Uh, and then I think they're involved, heavily involved with Mission 22 and with their contribution. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, like with our focus is mainly towards, uh, you know, our service members who we've lost, uh, you know, in, in conflict. Yeah. Um, the, the ones that have, you know, 
went out and, um, you know, basically, uh, gave so their lost their life in the, in the service. Yeah. 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 yeah the line of duty. Okay. Yep. Now, does this include, um, sailors, airmen, Marines who are, who lose their life, like in training accidents and in other ways, or is it just within combat situations? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, eventually, uh, it'll be the ones who've lost their lives in service, like everybody. Mm. Um, I think our main, our main focus right now is the ones that have lost their lives yeah. in, in combat. Now, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I would imagine that, that as a corpsman, that particular issue hits pretty close to home for you. Um, yeah, I mean, um, you know, again, deploying three times to Iraq and yeah. once to Afghanistan. Uh, you know, for me personally, um, my second deployment was my my most difficult and toughest mm. just because, you know, I lost a uh, fellow corpsman, I uh, lost a couple of my Marines during that deployment. Yeah. And, um, you know, like I said, when I first started this brand, right, like my ultimate goal at, at the end um, was to try to give back to the community. Um, yeah. I just at that time didn't know how, how or how I was going to do yeah. that. And then, you know, just 2020, you know, came out with this idea of the memorial coins and um you know obviously you know i think over the over the years just um i've gotten better at coping with uh with those personal losses mm. um I, I mean for everybody i think initially right like you try to deal with it the way you think it's um, it's it's best right yeah um but over time i've learned how to deal with it in a healthier way so to say. yeah well you know like i was saying on your show vet with a mic for me is largely therapeutic as well i started off kind of like this is just like an a an a recorded journal this right. was how i was contending with some major issues that were happening within our community. I, knew, I felt as if I had to do something. I didn't know. I had all this raw energy. Like, where do I start? I know that I see the research. I see what the numbers are. You know, I, I, I can run statistical analysis. What do I do, though? And how do I bridge who I was in the uniform and who I am as a professional now? What can I do to just get my hands around a part of the issue? Because obviously these issues run a lot bigger than you and I and our, even our combined efforts. But if we can just feel as if we're, we're making some headway, right, that just adds a little bit of, well, like I said, therapeutic gain for our private lives, that we're feeling as if we're making a difference to, to the people that we care about the most. Um, or their loved ones, because, you know, a veteran, much like one who is lost in the line of duty, suffers, does not suffer in isolation. The whole family does. So whenever, whenever a veteran gets out and they're having problems adjusting to life after the uniform, their spouses feel it, their children feel it, their moms, their dads, their sisters, their brothers, everybody feels feels the same strain with them obviously not to the same degree but when you do something for the families you're doing something for the entire community too right because we're all interconnected i guess is the the point that i'm making yeah most definitely and i think um uh, obviously it's important that we continue to just to remember the sacrifices just remember that they were here, uh, they were a part of part of our yeah. family, um, and just yeah. you know, continue to live. My thing is, you know, they didn't make it; I did. Uh, but what am I going to do with the time that I was given? Right. Um, right. 
Yeah. How am I? How am I going to be able to continue to cont contribute contribute to society and uh, most especially just give back to our community? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, I, and it's profound. You know, it's a profound weight to carry around to you. Um, you know, have you ever heard of Jordan Peterson? Are you, yeah. are you familiar yeah. with him? Yeah. So he um, kind of says a few uh, common phrases, but he just says, act as if you're someone who is responsible for helping, you know? And I think that's kind of what you're circling at is uh, you're acting as if you are someone who is responsible for helping. You're out there doing things for oftentimes, I assume strangers, people that you don't know, and I, how do you run down the families for these, for people? Yeah, so, so um, thank you for asking that because, um, you know, right now that's our biggest challenge is, is finding the families of, of fallen service members. Uh, you know, to begin with, uh, the ones that we've been given are the ones that I personally know or somebody mm -hmm. within my circle knows um who who those family members are um so my main goal for this first quarter of the year is just basically um and hopefully soon just talking to a couple organizations um, mm -hmm. is you know connecting with those organizations that can assist us with um not only finding but also providing the the memorial coins to those families yeah well, I think um, I think I'm going to try to do the best I can to help you out with that. I'm going to connect you with a few different people. You have maybe we can have a synergistic reach, right? Okay. As we talked about on your on your show, the fact that everybody that I know and everybody that you know, just by proximity of of us meeting, now our our social circles have just doubled. So I'm going to try to hook you up with a few people, and maybe we can get out a little bit more of a reach because we are only about eight percent of the u.s population and we can move a hell of a lot of heavy lifting if we if we all work together so to speak so i think um i think we're going to pass on a couple of different contacts to you see if we can't get this thing figured out a little bit because that was one of the things that the reason why i ask is while i i nominated ma touche briar for the um till Valhalla plaque which he was in Siganella, by the way that's yeah. how i met him um yeah, they were asking me about the next of kin stuff. And I was like, I have no yeah. idea how to run yeah. down this information for people. So I just kind of opened it up to Facebook and I said, Hey guys, I tagged a few people that were in Sicily with me. And I said, I need anybody who knows anything about this guy. Cause he and I had only met a handful of times, me and MAT Briar. I just hated how he went, you yeah. know, his, his life meant, just ended in such a tragic way. I was like, my brother deserves better than that. And his baby deserves better than that. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, man, I got to do something yet again, just, I got to get involved. I got to help some way. But that was one of the things that I had the most trouble with is just trying to find how to get this plaque, even though I didn't even make it to the family because I knew it was going to mean a lot to them. Right. And and that was the the one of the biggest hurdles. I had some information about M.A. Touche Briar, but I didn't know much about his life beyond the uniform. Yeah, I think that's uh, <clears throat> I think a good way with you know with what Tobahala is doing and what we're trying to do, right? Is just sharing sharing the story, yeah. um, not just of story of service, but you know, sharing the actual story of, of the person, of who they are and, yeah. um, you know, the families that they leave behind. And, yeah. um, and like you said, like that's even that small gesture of, you know, generosity, I think goes, goes a long way to, for the families. Yes. Yeah. And I agree. Um, I, I hope because, and I don't, I'm not really trying to sit here and talk about a, a man's story necessarily, but this, how he passed away was he had a child with 
a woman and he was trying to exercise his rights as a father. It got contentious. The woman lured him into a, a field with another person and they shot him in the back. And he died in a cold field in the dark and it took him hours to die. And I just wanted his baby to know that the uniform loved him too. And that he was a hero in our eyes too, because he had a little trouble coming out of the uniform. Not going to lie, but I just wanted to some something that she could have, even if it's 15, 20 years into the future, that yeah. she knew that her father was loved by our our veteran community. Something that so, she can carry with her. Yeah. And so I applaud for what you're doing, man. Cause that's I think that you never know what ripples that will that will leave in right. somebody else's life in the future. Because there's such a hole that's left in a person's life when we are not there to occupy it. And it's a small token, but if nothing else, it's something that can physically tangibly um, represent the hole in their, in their life. So, like I said, I applaud you for doing things like that. I, can you tell me about the process? How does it, how does one, I assume that you, you contact a third party vendor and they help make it or are you doing that yourself as well? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. So the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the first, we created the first 100 of these memorial coins and actually uh, one of our fellow uh, Navy, Navy chiefs has helped me out with the design. Mm. Um, so he's, you know, we've collaborated as far as making the design and creating this coin and, um, and then from there, like I said, you know, just the ones that we know, the ones that I know in my circle um, that know this service member, yeah. you know, we, we try to contact them and, and, and hopefully try to get with uh, the family uh, to, to be able to, um, if not have somebody there provided for them or, um, you know, if anything, we could just uh, mail it out and yeah. uh, send it to their to their homes so i would say you know don't reinvent the wheel with something like that i said the, a similar um, project is doing of course their their purview is a little larger is they're just asking for input from others so there's a form that they created and when you want to nominate somebody you know you just yeah, fill out the form. Idea. Yeah, yeah yeah so i i think that that could probably um, extend your reach of just asking for support from from the community itself to fill out this form and let us know give us all the information that you can and you can run down as many leads as you can from that from that initial push and like i said i i got the email from them and i was on it i immediately sent out a facebook uh, message or a facebook post saying hey 911, I need help. They need this ASAP. Um, what can we do? And I'm not, I'm going to tell you, man, there were so many people that rogered up and moved heaven and hell to help me get this information for this, uh, for this family. So I think that that's probably a good model to use. Okay. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, so, to, uh, so tell me, right, yeah, yeah. So well, let's go back to your podcast for a second. What's the, uh, what's one of the, who are, who are the, some of the guests you've had? What's, what's been your, if you had a top five, so to speak of guests, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to put you on the spot, man. Cause I know we didn't talk about this before. Um, yeah. but if, if there is, are there any stories that just are particularly, um, they resonate with you particularly strongly? Um, I, uh, probably in the big, the ones in the beginning, I would say, Jonathan Lopez, he is a uh, Army veteran amputee. Uh, er Earl Granville is also an amputee. Um, I, I believe he's actually running for uh, political office um, mm -hmm. in, in Pennsylvania right now. Uh, and they're both, um, uh, I can't remember the organization's name right now, but, but they're both ambassadors of, of, that, of that organization. Um, 
probably in the beginning also I had Rudy Reyes of uh, Generation Kill. Mm. Um, that was like, new... like the HBO thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that the was... the real person, right? Not <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But yeah, that was a that was an interesting interview because uh, Rudy's kind of like uh, very like go 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 moto yeah. marine. Right? Wait, so how the hell did you get a hold of him? I just think like, was, you just it, like shot in the dark, just re, like sent out a Instagram message or something. Yeah, I just uh, you know with these interviews, I just you know obviously follow um, social media pages and kind of just reach out to people. And you know, some say you know, some say maybe not right now, or you know, <laughs> yeah. um, I've been I've been rock starred a couple of times. Yeah, too, right? yeah. So uh, I mean, I don't mind. You know, um, it's it's whatever. For me right like um, yeah but yeah some of them obviously you know they they reached back out and rudy was one of them uh in the beginning that reached back out and he had a short amount of time um to get an interview in but you know we did it um yeah that was an ish- interesting interview um i recently had jason mccarthy i don't have the, uh he's he's the founder of go ruck um i don't have that um premiered yet I just recently had a recording. So it's them. Go Ruck, right? Yeah, Go Ruck. Yeah. Okay, because I know another guy who does. Um, do you give a ruck? <laughs> That's another oh, one. I've never. No, yeah. I've never so that. they're getting creative with the different <laughs> uh, ruck puns. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a couple of uh, um, Scott Mann, who's a former Green Beret. Um, 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 he's also a businessman of roof, rooftop leadership uh, consulting. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, off the top of my head, Jason Piccolo, who is Army veteran, he has the Protectors podcast. Uh, yeah. No, I've seen that guy. Yeah, yeah. I've saw him on Instagram a few times. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's got he's a pretty, pretty big cool. following, right? Yeah, yeah. He's awesome. He's. I mean, he's been on TV. He, I think on yeah. TV. He's like a regular there. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I was about to say, I've, I, he's got a pretty big following. Yeah, yeah. Man, you're reeling some big fish over there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, man. I'm trying to. Yeah. Um, so what is your, like, for those of us who, I know that we generally said that you're you're giving up positive um, role models or positive representations of the veteran identity. But so, like, obviously, with my mental health training, the thread that kind of runs through vet with the mic is we circle a lot about psychological ideas and content and mental health issues. What is the, the, the run through of your podcast? As far as like con- the concept. And yeah. Like, like I, you know, for example, um, the morning formation, which is a, another great podcast within the veteran identity, yeah. They have more of like a professional development tilt to to their content. What is it that if you could, as the host, as the, the podcast extraordinaire, what is what do you consider the central theme for your podcast? I think uh, for our podcast, I mean, our our veterans, the guests that we have on, they're you know, it's not one type of field that yeah. they were in, right? It's it's a variety of things that they're doing in their second service. Um, I'm tracking. Okay. So for me, it's it's a lot of uh, self education. Um, okay. A lot of uh, you know tools, whatever interests our listeners might be in, uh, you can pick whatever episode and kind of just get some okay. takeaways from that from that. Um, so guest. so Scott from the Drive On podcast kind of has that too. It's just every he has a catalog that's pretty prolific at this point, man. I think he has like 180 episodes or something. Cool. Like man, Scott has just been pumping them out. And he has them all kind of uh I guess you'd say just um Categorizer. sorted sorted by different content different topics so that somebody is saying oh well i'd like to know about mental health he has like a catalog that are all his episodes are about mental health um so that sounds like you're taking a similar approach i i mentioned these other podcasts because i kind of take it maybe it's the sailor and me one team one fight we're all doing things very similar from different angles 
to put out positive information into the community. And so if, if, if you grow and you advance, I grow and I advance. That's the way I feel it because all the stuff you're putting out is it's just been great, great material. I've checked out a few episodes. Same thing with those other guys. I, I really take joy in seeing my brother's, in podcasting right. it just happens to be that they're all male i i got a couple of, of females that I'm, I'm encouraged to work with very recently uh, i hope that they will take me up on it but i i i take joy in seeing them grow and expand their their reach as well yeah you know uh you know you just, just talking about you, me hearing you just talk about that you know it'd be great to just like you know we, we have some sort of conference or get together right? these days right yeah like, about the veteran I, podcast yeah i would like to see some kind of even if it's just because obviously you said you're in north carolina i'm here in nashville um kp is in uh, california scott is in arizona so <laughs> we're all we're we're scattered to the wind so to speak um, i guess we kind of get the south locked down over here but yeah. um you know, I'd love to see us like even just get together and do like some kind of video conference right, yeah. where we can all just kind of connect and and network a little bit and say, hey, even if it's just something like this, man, ah, if there's a if there's a guest out there that doesn't fit my format, I need to be able to pass them along to somebody else because not everybody's going to have necessarily a mental health tilt to their story. Right. And there's nothing wrong with that. But like I said, um, you know, you don't put a country artist on a rock station, so, you know, so you just refer them to the country station in which, you know, you happen to have a connection with. And that's, I think, that's the reason why I was kind of asking you, like, where can, what genre, so to speak, would I, would I label you under? But it sounds like you're mixed variety, kind of like me, a <laughs> little, yeah. little different. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no. So I think that we should all kind of get together and and, yeah. and pull our resources because the the veteran podcasting um, arena is is a pretty diverse crowd. It really is, yeah. and I think that I don't know why, but you came up in my orbit really quickly, and so did the other two. And I'm going, is there something about the algorithm that's <laughs> that's <laughs> suggesting uh, that? Uh, I don't, I don't know how that really happened, but it, it was like, as soon as I don't remember how you even really popped into my Instagram radar, but you were there. And I, and I was like, man, I got to reach out to this guy. Cause I see he's doing some things very similar to me. And I think that, you know, maybe we're using it to be a little new agey. There's symmetry in the universe, man. Maybe the, maybe the universe is directing yeah. us to, to, uh, to, uh, increase our resources together yeah i think uh you mentioned like the algorithm i th i think as soon as after as after i reached out to you um you know those those other recommendations of other pages yeah. right and i think drive on was one of those yeah um obviously i've been in contact with uh jason piccolo with the protectors podcast um yeah i mean like it's it, it'd be fun you know i i, I kind of i wrote it down in my notes uh you know, we should do some sort of conference. Uh, yeah, well, you're the chief, man. You can make it happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> Deck plates gotta, lead the way, right? Gotta, yeah, we got the operations with that, like logistics. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, uh, is is there anything else that we've kind of uh, that we haven't really touched on? That's the central message of of what your second service is. No, I mean, uh, you know, I think we've touched on the podcast, and obviously our mission with the memorial coins mm. and um you know if any of our listeners or viewers want to learn more they can just go to our website uh fortis-fidelis.com and uh, yeah, just learn more about us so you did something that was really funny um i don't remember the exact fast five questions but uh, <laughs> since since you did it i'm sure you know them by heart obviously <laughs> So since you did it for me, I want to, I want to hear what your, what your fast five were. So if, if you could, if you could tell me the question and then your answer. All right, let's go back to the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see here. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. You, you turned it around on me. 
<laughs> oh man, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but no, no, you did. I figured at this point it's like a, a second nature for you. You probably asked, well, I mean, ninety people <laughs> what their best vibe is. Um, I remember some of the questions, but not in order. But let's see here. So we'll say work. Um, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> it's no worries. I, I'll just remember the ones that, if anybody of history alive or dead. Who would you want to talk to? Mm, that was one. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, I would say Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, don't say that too loud in North Carolina, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was just a Southern history joke. Um, so I know the second one was, or another one was, if what's a book that you would recommend others read um for me a book i just finished last year was uh atomic habits by mm. james clear i have heard of that i have yeah. heard of it um it's 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 helped me out a lot as far as um you know help it help me in my daily um routine um mm basically just be more um, intentional with with my actions and with uh, right. what I have to do. Yeah, for sure. And okay, so another one was, um, what's your favorite quote, right? Yeah, favorite quote. Um, so I don't remember who, who did say this, but it doesn't uh, matter. Nobody, <laughs> nobody knows anyway. Right? Like, you can say anything and you can attribute yeah. any quote to anybody on the internet now. Right. So uh, for me, it's uh, how you do anything is how you do everything. Nice. Okay. All right. Those, those are the only questions I remember. Anyway. I know there's <laughs> two more. <laughs> so oh, one of them was like the, uh, um, what do you see yourself in a year? Right. Five yeah. years. 10 years from well, now. I mean, given that it's still technical, I guess it's the second week of January. I mean, most people are still, I think, have their resolutions going. <laughs> so maybe, yeah. Um, I mean, for me, like uh, within a year, uh, you know, I've been doing this for quite a while for, mm. by myself, uh, you know, I've, with the family, active duty, this businesses, podcasts. Uh, this this quarter, I want to try to uh, what we do in the uh, Navy and the military, right? Delegate some of those tasks that I um, that I do. Um, work in my business, not on my business. Type yeah, of deal. yeah, uh, yeah. It'd be nice. I need some. Uh, I need a staff. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you over there? Get over here and start helping me. <laughs> I got um, nobody. I'm just talking to myself in my living room. Yeah. No, yeah, I, and, then, and then for me, it's just you know just to focus more on connecting with organizations and companies that can further my 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 mission and my second service. Right. All right. So I remember a last one. Right. Or yeah, I think it's the last one. So, Chief, what do you do for self care? What do, What are the things you like to do that bring you joy in life? Oh man. First and foremost, what brings me joy is just being with my family. Of course. Um, I got two daughters, a three-year-old, eight-month-old. And, um, you know, I, I want to spend as much time as I can with them. Um, obviously, with my military obligations, um, I try to set um, at least minimum one hour with no interruptions from cell phone or anything like mm. that. Just family time, you know, family yeah. hour that we, uh, we try to set for ourselves. And, yeah. Um, because yeah. you know, you'll, you're not going to get those back. Um, yeah. those times that you lose, um, as they grow old, it's like, uh, next thing you know, they'll be, <laughs> they'll be in high school and then going off to college and you'll never rarely see them again. So. <laughs> That's true. But are you a good cook? No, my wife cook? is a great cook. You, your wife's a great cook. <laughs> so somebody's making some great lumpia, right? So yeah. they'll oh, always, definitely. <laughs> they're always going to be coming back for that, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they will. They will come from the other side of the planet to get some good lumpia for sure. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Man, I I'm going to tell you, we my last duty station in Siganella, um, there was a couple of different wives 
that would stop by and drop stuff off at the gate. And man, I probably, I don't, I'm, I must have put somebody's wife, like their their kids through college, buying plates and limping. <laughs> like, like, I can eat my body weight to that stuff, man. It is, <laughs> That was I one, swear, there's like crack in it or something, and I don't know. Well, that was one of the things that they did uh, over there, like kind of like a side gig. Was yeah, that's what I mean. Food and just yeah. bring out to to you all out there in the gate. Yeah, Battle's wife, which is another MA, um, Janet. She has um, uh, Janet's kitchen. Of course, it's Cochina. I I don't know. If that's is that how you say it in Spanish? Cochina. Cochina. Anyway, yeah, like, and she still posts pictures on Facebook, and it just makes my mouth water. I'm like, God, <laughs> man, like, because I remember how good it was. Because she had the Mexican food on lockdown. She was great. <laughs> like, so she still, she still made like puts those pictures up, and it makes me a, a lust for her food from, from like thousands. I don't even know where Battle is in the in the universe right now, but yeah, it's it was some good times back then for sure. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, so I, I guess, like I said, is there anything else then that we need to we we plugged your your show, we plugged where people can find you. Um, do you have a like a cash app or something set up, a Patreon set up where people can go and donate to you to contribute to the to the coins? Um, yeah, I do have with our podcast. Um, so we go through Anchor. Okay. Um, they can just click on our Instagram page. Uh, click the the link in the in the bio, and there's there's a tab for if they want to support our mission. Um, yeah. Okay. And then yeah, I got to get on Patreon. I got to get. Yeah, on man. I, like I I have three um, contributors there. <laughs> like so, I'm, I'm really. <laughs> but no, I and I I when I when I saw every single time I see, I'm just like, man, I am so thankful for you people. You have no idea. Um, I I was touched. Because there's, yeah. uh, of course, there's a little bit of cost when it comes to podcasting. I don't think people know that. Um, just the the streaming service that we're using right now, StreamYard. There's right. a monthly subscription for that. There is a monthly subscription for Buzzsprout, the 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 hosting that I use Buff because I, yeah, I use a certain amount of hours, and so <laughs> that's how they get you. Uh, <laughs> they give you like a little taste, like they give you two hours free, of course, and then how quick you can run through two hours. So there's a little bit of overhead for this stuff, of course. And so I, I try to like sell t-shirts and, and hoodies, but I, I feel bad about those because people think when they see the, the merchandise that maybe like, man, I can't believe it's $50 for a hoodie. If you only knew, like I make like $2 a unit off of this. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't and know I, like how much you actually make. Yeah. 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 And so I, I, I hate that I almost, feel like people are going man yeah 50 dollars for the hoodie bro and i go man i wish i'd give them away if i could man it's like i am i've set them as low as possible for the unit price just so that people will have vet with a mic on their person i that's what i try to do but you know yeah there's there's a lot of costs that come with doing this kind of even this nonprofit kind of charity work yeah. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. I know they believe in our mission. I know that they they support us. So every little bit helps. Every dollar helps um, take the burden and ease a little bit of the weight from us. So I just wanted to see if there was a, an opportunity for people to give to your particular vision. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, just the uh, the anchor, uh, the link in our Instagram bio. If they you know they can support us uh, yeah. monthly. And there's set amounts, and you can pick, you know, uh, um, an amount as well, yeah. and how you can support us. But uh, yeah, support small businesses, support the little yeah. guys out there. Yeah, I get uncomfortable talking about it. Uh, do you? I do. I don't I really do. talk much about. Yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. I I, hard. <laughs> I I really don't. I'm like, man, I don't like. I don't want to feel like I'm like taking a cup and begging for you know. But it, yeah. there is. I think if they knew what what kind of happens in the background a little bit, maybe they would a little bit more understanding of why we have to sit there and go, please, uh, may I have another? <laughs> you know? But yeah, um, we're just the yeah. little guys, you know, we're just yeah. asking yeah. for some change. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, I mean, people see maybe the followers, cause you have a, a, a fair amount of followers on Instagram, right? I think you have like 5,000, right? 
I mean, over about five years or so built up. Yeah. Um, I need to get on your level, man. I'm at like 500. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, so if, if, if that's all, if there's no other pressing business, so to speak, we go. Yeah, I, I, we're good, Ryan. I appreciate, yeah. again, I appreciate yeah. the time and for having me on your podcast. And of, um, of course, hopefully we can connect soon. Yeah, we will, man. So if you've enjoyed this conversation that we've had with Raiden and his podcasting endeavors and the beautiful work he's doing for the fallen service members out there, please spread the word about the conversations we're having here on vet with a mic, because we largely are relying upon the good efforts of you people and helping spread the word about the general mission that some of these great podcasts that we've talked about are doing out there for the veteran space. So if there's a particular topic or interview you would like to see come to fruition here on Vet with a Mic, please reach out to me on all our social media accounts. I'm on all the platforms you guys know, or you can reach out to me at Ryan at Vet with a Mic.com. But as always, however life finds you, hope life finds you well. Till next time. <laughs>